Hi, Corey with Gold Rush Expeditions. We're out here today at the Lucky Dollar Mine, and uh, we're in Lewis and Clark National Forest, which has historically been an issue for Gold Rush. The Forest Service out here believes that they own everything and that the people have no rights to anything out here. They are uh, extremely difficult for the miners. They try to close down every road they can. The road has been purposely blocked, not because it's a legal closure, but because the Forest Service came in here and moved about eight, 10 trees in, that way it's not a, you know, we didn't officially close this, but hey, if the road remains closed for a while, then, you know, we don't want to disturb nature. So you might see this occasionally, property of the United States. So you're prohibited under penalty of the law from committing trespass. So what does that mean? Property of the United States, I'm a United States citizen. So does that mean it's mine? Really it does. And that's why the sign is written like that. Second, committing trespass. What is committing trespass? I'm on public lands. I'm on a public mining claim. I'm on a cabin that was built by miners on public land. What this is, is, ooh, it's a scary sign. And it's the way the Forest Service says, ooh, don't touch any of this because we think it's ours. And you might think, Corey, you're just being a dick. The Forest Service is just trying to help preserve these things. If that is the case, Forest Service hates anybody building anything. This was built by miners. The Forest Service is trying to eradicate any mining out here. In that case, you've got a little lock here that says USFS. So why in the f would the Forest Service have any right or any reason to lock up this cabin that they neither built, had anything to do with structurally preserving or anything else? This is strictly a miner's cabin, yet the Forest Service out here, Lewis and Clark, at their best, the Great Explorers, Lewis and Clark National Forest, is gonna lock you down and lock you out of anything that they can out here. Let's take a look around and we'll show you some other bullshit that Lewis and Clark National Forest is putting on the people. All righty, so we're around to the other side of the building here. We've got another scary, scary sign up here that says, hey, this belongs to the Forest Service, not the people. Keep your hands off it. So you as the public, Lewis and Clark believes you have no right to be out here looking at your history. You've got this neat little sign, which is the hypocrisy of the Forest Service at best. So what you've got here is a, uh, archeological resources are fragile and irreplaceable. Just to be clear, archeological doesn't mean Indians, doesn't mean civil war. Archeological means old. That's it, that's all, it's old. So archeological resources are fragile and irreplaceable. Mining structures and mines at this point, because we already know this is well over, you know, hundred some odd years old, is an archeological resource. So if you came out and drilled a bunch of your signs into an archeological cabin, if you came out and put a bunch of hasps on the door so that you could put your own lock, all those things would seem to be altering and uh, defacing these historic sites. They've defaced the building out here. They've put their own little crap on it. The mining stuff that's around has been tossed about. There's an oven that's been dismantled around the back there, kept in here. And we've totally locked down this building and everything that's in it, even though it belongs to the American people. Lewis and Clark National Forest Service. Hypocrites of the week? Maybe, I don't know. What you're seeing below me is a lot of the haulage tunnel. Well, we're assuming it's the haulage tunnel. We've got a bunch of track here. We've got a lot of electrical, steam power. So it appears that everything was kind of shooting out this way. We've got track down here. We haven't really explored the whole site. What we have found so far is this massive little beast that's blowing a ton of cold air, which is a good sign. Uh, we've been taking some samples from down here already. Probably not gonna be able to see us very well, but looks like we've got some good silver, gold, and probably some lead in here. Let's go take a look at the rest of the mine, the cabins, and the infrastructure around the Lucky Dollar Mine. All right, so where we're at is what I think is the haulage tunnel. Does anyone recognize this? It's a chrome beauty ring from the uh, little ridges on the inside of it. I'm betting it's probably from a uh, mid 60s Dodge. This was a large portal that came out. You can tell by the size from the track. It was covered at one point. Likely you had some sort of pulling mechanism that was pulling your cars in and out. That was probably being fired up by a lot of this electrical that you see. There is a boiler here, which lends me to think that 
This probably was in production pre-1900s and then as things got faster and faster and electricity was easier to run in, this probably was in the 50s, 60s that they were running this to get this electricity running for the mine. Got water pipe running. All of this tells me this is a large mine. We're gonna have to go back and look at a bunch of the history on it. It's been kind of blocked off. Um, the roads are a little bit blocked, but they are still open. There's just a lot of tree fall that you're gonna need to cut out. Let's go take a look at what the rest of the infrastructure, the cabins, the tipples, all that shows us. We'll get up top, see what it looks like up there, and see if you can't piece together exactly what was going on and see if you can't find somewhere to get underground. What I just wanna just spotlight is some of the cool ingenuity of miners, as I like to do. I am in basically a big old track hoe. This is probably a 1940s, maybe early 1950s model. It is completely bastardized. As you can see right here, I've got levers for a good bit of everything. All my holes for my clutch, everything else, all these holes have just been cut. They aren't part of the stamped steel, they've been cut out. They're rough. These have just been bolted on which is power. What you can see right here is I've got a series of gears with a winch on the back. So why would I have a series of gears? Well, just for a straight up reduction so that it's lighter for everything to pull. Well, my guess would be what they did here is uh, the early miners, when they were up here, had the machinery going, everything was working. The guys that came back in the, probably the 60s is what I'm gonna ballpark. Came up here, they use this big bad boy and this is what they're pulling ore cars and ore. Why would they do that? Well, because they don't have to maintain the machinery that's already out here. They don't have to fix anything. They just bring something up. And if you look, there's just a ton of cable spooled onto this thing. And I've got a big spool of cable back here too that is probably three, 400 feet, more than enough to get down to the bottom of the mine and pull something back up. You've also got one, two, three, four, five pulleys on this system before it even gets to the end of that boom. So you're reducing your weight again five times. So it'd make it pretty easy for this thing to haul up 1,000, 2,000 pounds of ore. It's cool, it's intact, it's, I mean, everything kind of works when I say kind of, as well as it can. It's just a freaking cool piece of machinery and it shows what the miners did back in the day, even back in the 60s and 70s, to make something work. That is uh, similar to what you need to do today when you get out here and start mining because it's you against the world. So, we are here in what used to be the old hoist house. Maybe it was a new hoist house. We'll do a little work. We'll see what historical pictures we can find. This was where all your winch was operating. I've got a super cool little uh, control panel here. It tells me that there is uh, 2,650 hours on this machine, my water temperature is zero, my oil pressure is zero, and my amps are zero. I've got a little starter, I've got a choke, but uh, it appears that somebody didn't do their maintenance very well because it doesn't look like it's gonna fire up. For all you old Chevy guys out there, the top of this transmission, oh, power glide, what would that be? A two-speed power glide, a very old power glide, maybe even before Chevy, but you should remember a two-speed power glide trans transmission from your old Chevys. Somebody stole the seat off this, for what ungodly purpose, I don't know. The rest of it all seems to work just fine. You got a gas pedal, you got a horn, you got the whole nine yards, you got this uh, button. In my perfect world, this would have been the beer button. So if you sat here, you'd be running your your little winch, do do do. You bring it down, you bring it up. You got your wife down in the in the cabin, and you're like, hmm, feeling kind of thirsty. I think I could use a beer. Where's the beer button? Oh yeah, here it is and way down in the cabin, there'd be a and your wife would be like, oh no, I better go get him a beer really fast. And then she'd bring you a beer. That would be awesome. That is my best case scenario. Probably didn't happen, but it's still an awesome thought. So if you're coming out here to mine, you can pretty much plan that it's gonna be you against the world. The Forest Service, the Environmental Bullshit Acts, all those other things are gonna be pushing against you. You're gonna to need to be out here and working and fighting every day. This is what the miners were doing. This is not a casual use type of thing. This is not a, oh, I wanna be a hobby miner. If you're gonna come out here, if you're gonna mine, if you wanna make some money, you need to come out and you need to work it and you need to work it hard and don't let anybody step in your way. If you're gonna just sit back and go, hey, the Forest Service sent me a nasty letter and I'm scared, 
you don't want to mine. You don't want to be out here. This is not what you're going to be doing. You're not going to make money at it. However, if you get that nasty letter from the Forest Service and you come directly to us and you say, hey, this is bullshit. I've got rights. I've got rights as an American and I'm going to come out and work my shit then you're probably kind of the person that we want to have out here to make America great, to start building America with mines again, and you know, you've got the right idea. All right, well, this pretty much wraps up this mine site for us. What it looks like we've been doing out here is a lot of silver with gold. There's probably a lot of lead, but lead was only good for war act, and people were out here way after that. You've got what appears to be a lot of workings. You've got two shafts going down, and a haulage tunnel at the bottom. The haulage tunnel is probably your last piece that was built out here and that was where everything came out of. You've got winches, motors, tractors, all sorts of fun up here. It's a beautiful site. We're out here in Montana. So you are gonna have somewhat of a short season in that once the snow comes, it's gonna be crappy, but you're also gonna get rid of the snow probably in May-ish. So plan for that. For Gold Rush Expeditions, I'm Corey. We will see you at the next site.